I did have, I did have three kind of what I just like to call area of opportunities, not deficiencies, area of opportunities. The first one is on offense. We just showed two of them. You got to find AJ Dillon's plays early. Like, okay, we can, he can wear the defense down and, you know, he's good and cold wet. The, but you, you got to think about it. AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon's going, dude, I don't want to run this play again. If you guys aren't going to block it, like I just want to run downhill. I'm pretty good at that. And I feel like because he's so athletic, sometimes they're like, let's run outside zone. Let's run the toss. Let's, you know, let's run these things that maybe really aren't in his, Maybe they're either not in his wheelhouse or, as we saw, they just weren't blocked very well for whatever reason. Why don't we just do a double-double put, you know, that double-double is we got two double teams up front. Let him run off that, go downhill on a linebacker. I know Edmonds lit him up yesterday. I didn't want to put it on the tape. But he's generally pretty good at that stuff. It's the kind of the way to get yourself involved in the game, though, right? Either get or give a really good hit early in the game. Get downhill, get your legs, get your legs moving. So think about that. Number two, and this kind of goes along with it, you need to figure out what your offensive identity identity is. We need to be able to enforce our will on offense, meaning that – and Christian Watson's not there right now. We don't know really where how everything's going to play out. Is Jalen Reed going to be a, a primary guy? Is Dobbs going to be a primary guy? Secondary – all of that. We know that our offensive line is pretty good. Zach Tom coming in. Zach Tom, you didn't – I don't think you mentioned his name once yesterday. He played a, he played a good game. Our offensive line is pretty good. Aaron Jones is really good. Jordan Love seems to be um, a player that we can go. We could certainly build this team around. He had a good out. He didn't have a perfect outing. There's again, there's some throws you, you'd want back. Blah 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 blah. But he made plays. He man, he did a good job of managing this game. You need to be able to enforce your will on teams and whether that's running downhill and getting the offensive line to be kind of the, the stewards of the culture of the offense along with AJ and, and Aaron, whether that's dropping back and, and, you know, the combinations of, of speed and precision from Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. And then what we bring from the tight end room now, whatever it is, it needs to be, I need a, I need a gimme play. I'm dialing one of these 10 plays up that we can always get yards on 96 power load, for example, 93 blast, 97 stutter, you know, 98 handoff solid back when we used to run. I mean, these th- Fox 2 XY hook, okay? Hound 2, buck, you know, H2 buck. Like these play, you call them like we're getting yards. That's what's happening. They need those plays. They need to figure out what those are post Aaron Rodgers. And then the third thing, and this is the, the one thing I kept looking at on defense. I brought it up a couple of times. Still need to get Quay Walker to play smash mouth football, attack the attacker. Because you, you need to complement the play of the defensive line. And, and I probably am saying this. A little bit biased because I think before I watched this game in depth, I I just watched the Baltimore Ravens play defense. And the way that Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen play defense is just unique. They are Roquan Smith in particular. They're both really, really, they're just special. And they just fly around. I mean, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, they're both, they're doing some like matrix stuff out there. Okay. But they're physical. They throw their bodies around everywhere. We need that kind of mentality from that position maybe a little bit more so, a little more intensity level than we're getting right now. So those are my go-tos. And now we had some fan questions I just wanted to hit. Um, first fan question, how did Myers do? He did a – he didn't whiff. He whiffed on the on the pull. Uh, um, there was a, some protection issues where Love had to get rid of the ball quickly because a guy slipped between him and JRJ. Whose fault it is, I can't really tell on this on this tape. Uh, you know, you got pulled, pushed back on the first snap. It's just uh, there's there's going to come a point, and hopefully he's building and building confidence, building momentum. But there certainly will come a point where enough is enough. But I don't like, – as you look at the roster as constructed right now, you're not moving Zach Tom. And if you're not moving Zach Tom, you're not moving anybody else because that is the least important position on the offensive line in terms of physically what needs to get accomplished. The most important cerebrally – am I saying that cerebrally? cerebrally I think it's a word but least important from a a physical standpoint so he moves well you saw him get out with Aaron Jones where Aaron Jones said my bad he does a lot of things really well just needs to continue to clean it up right and again we have a little bit of time this defense is going to play like it is we're playing the Falcons next week they're not like a, a you know powerhouse 
Uh, what post game hot takes have you shaken your head? I, I I could probably go on forever. Uh, the one that there's two that I had. One, uh, the Cowboys defense obviously beat the ever living out of the New York Giants last night. But I kind of look at that as you know some bad things happen, and then you've got this poor this kid out of Alabama, Evan, the the, the first the fifth pick in the draft last year is just not playing very good football. He played bad football last year. He's playing bad football right now. And what starts to happen is it gets into the the brain of everybody who's playing. So like Daniel Jones, it's wet outside. There's a lot of pressure coming from the right. Do we need to change protection? Am I hot? I mean, all these bad things start happening. They're very, very good. I would I would guess that because DeMarcus Lawrence and, and Michael Parsons are the best that they have, I think, on defense. And I think Bakhtiari is going to be able to handle Michael Parsons. I mean – I think Demarcus Flores is, is probably the better pass rusher of the two, um, but Zach Tom, you know, in time, I think is is going to be able to handle those kind of elite level players, uh, especially if you you know throw in a chip, if you throw in a tight end block, etc. And I think there's some really really good defenses out there. I think San Francisco's defense is incredible. I think the New England Patriots defense is incredible. I think you caught the Giants caught the. The, excuse me, the Cowboys got the Giants on the worst possible night. They are very, very good, though. And then the other thing I keep, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo just gets, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo had lunch with a porn star, I think, in San Francisco one time, and his career has just kind of been written off since then. Yesterday, he's playing the Denver Broncos. He, you know, they don't score a ton of points. He goes 20 for 26, 200 yards, two touchdowns, one interceptions against a really good Denver passing defense for the for the Las Vegas Raiders. Jimmy G can play football, man. Like it, if whoever's saying he's like a mid-tier guy, he's he's not he's not, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes elite, but he's in that conversation of, you know, is he 7 to 12? He's a good player, man. I just I never understood with how many guys are getting paid a ton of money to to not go to the playoffs, to not win playoff games, and you just see like this guy keeps he just keeps winning. Every time he's healthy, he's winning. So Here's another question. Was dominance in the trenches are good or they're bad? This is a good question. And I think it's a little bit, but I think the answer is yes. I think we do have an offensive line because of Zach Tom kind of fortifying that right tackle position. I think our, and I think the style of football we're going to play, I think our offensive line is going to uh, do quite well this year. I, are they a top five team uh, offensive line? I don't know, but they're definitely top 10. Especially if Bakhtiari is healthy, they're definitely top. 10. He's just that good, right? He's that good for everybody else. Force, force multiplier, something we talk about all the time with them. But they're really bad on defense, the Chicago Bears. They they, already, they got rid of Gibson uh, for the final cuts. He was their best pass rusher because they got rid of uh, they got rid of uh, you know Robert Quinn during the season last year. Like they don't have anybody who can rush the passer. It's crazy. That's maybe since the Denver Broncos of like 1999. I can't recall a team that just didn't have a pass rusher. Like this team does not have a pass rusher. It's nuts. Their best pa- their best chance is to send one of the linebackers. Um, offensive, their offensive line. I think the rookie's going to be good. He got beat up, you know, a couple times yesterday, but it's going to be tough with that quarterback and that situation. Always going to be down. It's going to be difficult. But their offensive line's not very good. Uh, their defensive line's arguably the worst in the, in the league. So it'll be interesting to see when they go up against a better line. I know that, uh, you know, in particular, three technique for Atlanta next year, next week is going to give us fits. Um, impressions of Devontae White and, and Lucas Van Ness. Listen. Both had sacks. Van Ness had a great hustle sack. I, what you see, let me start with Van Ness because he's easy, right? He, he, he's first game doesn't have a lot of moves. Plays with incredible intensity and power. You can see the athleticism. He changes Justin Fields down, change of direction. Like he's gonna, he's just gonna be good because he's just a good athlete. And he plays hard. Like it's like football's not that difficult, guys. Like if you're a really good athlete, and you play really hard. You're gonna be at the very minimum. Like your floor is good. Now your ceiling could be excellent, great, superb, all pro, hall of fame, but your but your floor, if you just if you fulfill those two things, you're gonna be good. Because there's not that many guys who actually work that hard. And the kid works hard every single snap. Wyatt last year was playing too high, speed of the game, all this. He he didn't he dominated on some snaps. He was in the backfield a lot again, again against a bad offense line, but he was still in the, you still got to make the plays. I love the way that they're running him and Kenny Clark together. They run a couple games off one another. Um, he just looked fluid, much more fluid. I think that's the word I want to use than last season. And so if he's getting that bump up, uh, if he's been learning from Kenny, 
and trying to bring it every down. You know, they do a good job of rotating those guys. They, they have a hand. Wooten plays well. Slayton played well. Like, all those guys played well. So it'll be interesting to see in, in the weeks to come. But I was really – you have to be encouraged by both those guys. I think you really have to be encouraged by Devontae Wyatt just because it seemed that he made uh, he made more – more of his opportunities this year. He just seemed like the game was was within his wheelhouse to con- to control his little area of, of, of space out there on, on the grass. And then I think we already talked about it. You said anyone throwback. I love to see that. Absolutely love to see it. So 